All right, welcome. Uh, every year I get a lot of questions about gear that I use from new backpackers. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through some of the shelters uh, because this is one of the key uh, issues that gets brought up every year. So I've had a progression of shelters that I've used over the years and I just wanted to highlight them for you guys so that you can kind of look it over and, and help make a decision about which shelter you need for the type of backpacking that you're gonna do. So uh, the very first one that I ever had is this right here. This is just a, a bivy sack. This is from REI, it's a minimalist bivy. And this guy right here is really nothing more than just a waterproof shell that your sleeping bag stuffs in. And that's it. So this thing here, weighs just a pound it's not very heavy so if you're trying to go minimalist this is a uh, pretty good uh, for certain things if I'm gonna use it for one maybe two nights on a short trip and the weather might be kind of iffy um, this is not a bad choice um, what I like about it is that it is waterproof uh, so if it starts to rain you're gonna be okay what I don't like about this one in particular is that over the face is just this net um, so that's not going to be waterproof for you um, however what I, I find that I never use it because it just holds a lot of heat in it pushes my hot breath right back in my face so I typically sleep with it open anyways um, the downside to it the, the major downside is that it doesn't breathe so it's waterproof you could stick this in a mud puddle and and stay dry but it is not going to breathe and you're going to wake up in the morning with a lot of that condensation on your sleeping bag so you'll have to hang it up and dry it for a little bit in the morning um, the uh, the good side to it is that if it's really cold it does kind of raise the temperature inside by about 10 degrees at least so it holds a lot of heat in um, I thought this was the way I wanted to go when I was new to backpacking and really this guy doesn't get used too much over the last 10 years. Uh, that's why it still looks pretty brand new. Um, it has its time and place but really determined this wasn't for me. Um, so I graduated up from this. My next step was, uh, was the hammock behind me. So. Um, I thought, uh, boy, hammock camping sounds like a lot of fun. Ultimate in comfort, right? You're off the ground, you're gonna sleep well. Um, so there's a couple things about this. I have a tarp that goes over this, which is nice, it's waterproof tarp. I've slept in this hammock at 6,000 feet with two inches of snow on the ground and the wind just whipping and I stayed dry and pretty warm, decently warm. There's a couple things you need to know about a hammock is uh, the, the difficulties with it is the, the getting in and out, right? You're gonna try to get into bed. You've got, you're gonna take off your shoes. You got your sleeping bag out here. So then you're gonna slip off your shoes and try to climb inside of a sleeping bag. There's a lot of challenge to that with just getting the ins and outs and and getting comfortable um, the other thing is that uh, when you're sleeping you notice there's sort of an arc here and a lot of people don't realize it at first they wake up in the morning on their first night and they're like why do my knees hurt so bad and it's because this arc here you're actually hyperextending your knees so when you sleep in a hammock you need to roll up a sweatshirt or something and tuck underneath your knees to prevent that um, and the other thing is that you're compressing your sleeping bag underneath you and so you'll wake up and your butt will be cold, your back will be cold and you don't have to roll over. If you're a back sleeper, it's comfortable if you're a side sleeper or not, but with that cold, um, I found that I have to still take a sleeping pad and put under here to insulate, otherwise my butt gets cold. Um, they do make under quilts for these. So there are a lot of people that love hammock camping. Um, 
not really for me this to me is more of a just a relaxation thing but uh, the plus and minus of it is um, you know when you're if the weather's bad your stuff is just out where's your where's your stuff it's out on the ground potentially getting wet unless you have a, a bag to keep it in um, there's I find it to be pretty comfortable once you figure it out but um, it's not really any lighter than a tent not too much this whole setup here is a, almost three pounds I thought it was going to be a lot lighter and that's why I did it but like these straps here are super heavy so if you're going to go this route um, I recommend just using 550 cord because it's super tough and it's way lighter than these tree straps um, these tree straps just aren't designed for a backpacker they're not a backpacker's friend and the tarp is super heavy if you're going to be in weather like this where it's sunny and beautiful and you know that you're not going to need the tarp you can leave that at home and actually probably have a great time sleeping in the sky um, yeah summertime stuff but when I was using it in September when the weather starts to change not uh, not the ideal so after that one um, experiencing my first solo backcountry hunts in a hammock there's a lot of head games that you play you experience a lot of the fear of being alone at night when the lights go out and everybody new to backpacking is going to go through that um, but for me, what helped me get over that is uh, I switched to a tent. Just having the facade of safety with a shelter is what helped me. So I went to this here. This is the Big Agnes Copper Spur. This is a two-man. Um, I went with the two-man at the time because I wanted all the space to keep all my gear inside. If I was to do this all over again, I would just get the one-man. Um, because really if you're ever going to put a second person in there you got to be very comfortable with them so if your husband wife combo that's great um, if you're just solo you really uh, with the vestibules you got plenty of room to put all your stuff outside I always put my boots and um, what have you in these vestibules there's one on each side so with these vestibules on both sides, I can I can put my bow or my rifle on one side and my boots on this side. Everything stays dry. I've been through some nasty uh, rainstorms and never had an issue with getting wet in this uh, because I treat it. Um, but this thing's got plenty, really plenty of space internal. Um, so inside of here, I mean, I can sit up, which is nice. Uh, what one thing I really like about this, um, and uh, I use this for a couple seasons in September. You know, about uh, 14 days, and it did pretty good for me. And uh, even in a rainstorm, uh, where we weren't able to go out and hunt, we we're just waiting it out. We uh, sat in here and played cribbage, and it was comfortable. So. Um, this is all right. One of the downsides is that right now the sun's beating on it and it is really hot in here. So um, in certain weather, I mean, it's just, it doesn't uh, really do well if it's super sunny. You're going to cook inside of that thing. But otherwise, a decent tent. The only real downside to that guy is that it weighs four pounds. So for a solo backpacker, do you really want to carry four pounds? And, and uh, for me, the answer is no, most of the time. If you're going to be somewhere for two weeks, then maybe it's worth it so that you have all the space. But you need to determine, I guess, what your experience is going to be. If you're just through hiking and you're going to be setting up a tent in different places every day, this is probably not the right guy. You definitely would want to go with a one man. Um, but uh, it's a nice floored shelter and there are tons like this one so uh, let's take a look at the next shelter that I got 
Watch out for the stakes there. So this guy here is the seek outside little bug out, the LBO. And I live in this thing two weeks a year. Um, this is one of my favorite tents. And it's just because I can set up a base camp for two weeks in September. Uh, you see there's stove jacks in there. There's actually two stove jacks in this. Um, so we put a wood stove in here and the thing does a good job of heating it up in the evenings when we're getting into bed and in the mornings when we first wake up we can take the chill off and get dressed for those uh, mid-September mornings that are really cold. Um, we can sleep three people in here very very comfortably with all of our gear inside um, without the stove. Um, four people with some of your gear outside um, in the in September we usually have two of us in here um, with the wood stove and we've got ample space to really spread out uh, the whole thing with the stove is eight pounds so if you're gonna be in the backcountry set up for you know two weeks like we are this is a really good option uh, it's kept us dry through some really nasty rainstorms and you know thunder lightning all of that stuff and it's uh, it's never fallen down on us the other cool thing about it is that it is convertible so this is actually three sections so the tarp comes out you can connect the two ends together so this, this is the base tarp base and you can run the base base um, and reduce the weight and then it's about two pounds uh, probably about three with the one pole uh, so for two guys we did a bear hunt last year um, and this thing was perfect for us uh, nice and light we had lots of space running the base base um, without the stove and it was uh, it was very very comfortable so the, the thing that a lot of people don't like is that it's floorless so for me this floorless tent um, I love it but when I first bought it it took a little bit of getting used to because I don't like bugs and I really 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 hate spiders um, I have a tremendous fear of spiders so it's one of those things that I just had to get over but uh, you know it's it saves weight by being floorless and um, it really having that convertibility is, is really cool about this so yeah I can take out this whole section and bring it together so it's just one pole in the middle um, the other cool thing about this is that I could run just one end section have a three-sided shelter and it weighs one pound I can use my trek pole as a pole um, so I don't have to take these carbon fiber poles with me so if I was trying to do like a through hike and I just wanted to have enough shelter to keep the dew off me and wanted to still be able to see whatever's going on this is a great option at one pound and uh, it's you know it's Pretty neat so um, I really uh, like the convertibility of this um, most because you can just do so much stuff you know different configurations of it you can get in and out of it different ways um, we tend to use the, the ends as the access points but, you know you can set this up and just use it as shade, a nice shady spot, but it's uh, it's pretty spacious. So we tend to sleep this direction. I think you could easily get four people sleeping with your heads towards the middle. But when you sleep this way, you can, you know, two in the middle, two on each end, some gear in the sides. It's a, it's a good tent. I'm very, very happy with this. Um, and I don't see this going away anytime soon for our two week September elk hunts. So for summertime through hiking, bear hunting, uh, good weather stuff, I have gone to this guy right here. 
So this is one of my favorite things. This is made by Enlightened Equipment. Um, they make a lot of sleeping bags and stuff, but they're they're all about backpackers. And so this thing right here, you see I'm using my trek poles to hold it up. Uh, what you're looking at here weighs seven ounces. So it's super, super light. There is a tarp for it that I have, and I've been through two nasty rainstorms with the tarp, kept me dry, and uh, I've been really happy with that, even with the tarp. It's a little difficult to get in and out of with the tarp because the tarp is an end entry, so you have to drop it down like this, you know, unzip it, crawl inside, and then once you're inside of it, then raise this up and then zip yourself back up. But for summertime, like you know it's gonna be beautiful weather like this, this is such a good option because it weighs next to nothing and it is, uh, it keeps the bugs off you, you know? So if you are hiking at night and you decide, you know, it's, it's dark, I'm tired, we need to set up camp, you never know when you're gonna wake up and find out that you set up camp in a mosquito farm. And that has happened to us multiple times. And when you wake up and there's mosquitoes all over this net, you're glad that you had this little thing right here. But it's, it's just so nice to be able to just crawl inside of here and zip it up. You can still see the stars and enjoy, you know, sleeping out in the wilderness um and you get that aspect but yet you have the the protection from the skeeters uh just if uh if where you're at is anything like uh washington state the mosquitoes get pretty bad so um this thing's just a huge benefit but uh yeah that's uh that's been the progression that i've gone through and the way i choose which shelter I'm going to use is all dependent on the situation, the weekend, uh, or the long week, or two weeks, whatever is, uh, is going to be the most appropriate for the weather and the type of hiking that I'm going to do. So when you're out seeking for your shelter, um, at first you want to look for that versatility, something that you can use for multiple things. Um, and then you can expand from there and, and fine tune it. So this, uh, this bivy might not be right for you as a brand new backpacker because you want something that's gonna give you more weather protection, but you may find that it's something you add to the arsenal later. So um, I hope this video helps you to make your decisions on the way you wanna go with your backpacking adventures and the shelter that you choose. So um, get out there and put some miles on the trail and enjoy the outdoors. Thanks for joining us.